Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope everybody's having a great day. Today, we're gonna to be looking at how to set up SAML authentication for remote access VPN uh, in a checkpoint environment. Uh, and so a quick note, this has been available for a bit of time now on R80.40. Uh, for this demonstration, I'll be doing the configuration on R81 as we have had a further Azure AD integrations uh, in R81, and so it actually makes it uh, significantly easier, uh, and you don't have to do uh, a couple of kind of workaround steps that were required in AD.40. And before we get started, uh, I'll be go ahead and drop. I'll be going ahead and dropping the relevant SKs uh, in the comments below. Um, and without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first things first for us to set up the Azure AD. Um, uh, to pull in the Azure AD environment into the Checkpoint Smart Console, we're going to have to go ahead and create ourselves an enterprise application. And so to do that, let's go ahead and <clears throat> excuse me, navigate to Azure Active Directory from within your Azure environment. And go ahead and navigate to Enterprise Applications over here on the left. Okay. I have a couple of stuff here already created, just doing some testing, but let's go ahead and create a new application. All right, and for um, from this section here, let's go to create your own application. And we're gonna do non-gallery, which by default is the radio button that's selected. I'm just gonna call this Azure CP. You can name it really anything you want, doesn't matter. All right, the application has been added successfully. Uh, so the first thing we wanna do really quick is we wanna go ahead and grant it some additional uh, API permissions. And so to do that, let's go ahead and navigate to uh, back to our, our Azure AD default directory. And we're going to change from enterprise applications now to app registrations. Okay. And so but by default, you're not the owner of the application that you just created. So you're going to have to navigate to all applications here. And we can see Azure CP has now uh, popped up. And if you guys, for whatever reason, want to have it in that owners section, you can simply navigate over to this left-hand side here and just add yourself as an owner, and then uh, it'll show up there. Okay. And so let's go ahead and configure the API permissions. So let's go ahead and add this permission here. It's going to be Microsoft Graph. And it's going to be an application permission. And it's going to be three specific ones that we need. It's going to be device.readall. So scroll down here. Okay. And it's going to be group read all. So let's go to group, read all. And the last one's going to be user read all. All right, add these three permissions. Looks good. And then we also have to grant admin consent for uh, your Azure AD. So go ahead and click on yes. And there we go, it's, it's granted. Okay, so while we're here also, we're going to go ahead and configure our certificates in secret. Let's go ahead and give it a description for what you want. I'm just going to call it Azure CP again. Give it whatever expiration date you'd like. Go ahead and click on add. And the application key that we're going to use, I believe, is this first value. I'll copy the second one just in case. But go ahead and pop open a notepad and just take down these values here. So again, this is referred to as the application key in checkpoint. I'll take this one just in case. All right. So now we actually just need to go ahead and grab the information back from the enterprise environment, uh, enterprise application section. So let's go back here and navigate to Azure CP. And what we're going to need here is the application ID. I'm sorry, uh, where are we here? Oh, I'm sorry, I think we have to go back to the app registration. Yeah, sorry about that. So uh, we're gonna want the uh, directory ID, which is the tenant ID, and we also need the application ID. We don't need the object ID here, so let's go ahead and grab this. Okay. 
and the directory tenant ID. All right, so we got those, and then we have the application key. The API permissions have been set up, and um, that should be pretty much good to go. So let's go ahead and pop over to Smart Console. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and split this into two here for you guys. And we can see here, I already have this one set up, but we'll go ahead and configure a new one. Go to, um, it's gonna be Azure AD. So you can go new, more, and then user slash identity, and then Azure AD. I call this Azure CP. And we'll go ahead and take that app ID. Okay, we're gonna use the application key which is that uh, certificate token that we set up. And then of course the directory ID. Okay, so let's go ahead and test the connection. We can see that it worked, okay? So let's go ahead and click on okay. And it says it's gonna give you a slow pop-up. Azure AD currently only supports user authorization to allow user authentication as well as through Azure create a dedicated SAML identity provider object and configure it in the gateways browser-based authentication settings. Um, so that's what the second part of the video pretty much will be. So go ahead and click on OK. And now you can see that you have the Azure CP, uh, essentially the um, identity provider object. So this is what hooks in via API into your Azure environment to be able to read the, uh, the user directory. Those are the API permissions that we set up. Okay, um, and just remove any conflicts. I'm just going to remove this one that we just created and just use the existing one that I already had. All right, now let's go ahead and move on. So for the second part, we're going to have to create the SAML um, authentication object, which is going to be located here under identity provider, under the user and identity section. You can see I have a couple here already created, but we'll walk through, of course, creating a new one as well. All right, so now let's go ahead and pop back over to our Azure AD environment. And we're gonna go ahead and pop back over to Enterprise Applications. And we're gonna go ahead and create a new application. You wanna change single sign-on from all to SAML. And then from here, just Essentially, you could pretty much use any of them, but let's go ahead and use the correct one here, which is Checkpoint Remote Secure Access VPN. Okay. Go ahead and click on Create. All right, the application's been created successfully. And so from this section, what you want to do is you want to navigate over to Single Sign-On. Go to SAML. And from here, we're going to go ahead and grab these from Smart Console. Okay. So let's go ahead and create a new identity provider. I'm just going to call it Azure underscore VPN. It has to be a one word. You can't do any spaces or anything. Okay, we have the gateway. And then the service is going to be remote access VPN. And this section shows only if you have the proper Jumbo Hotfix applied for RED1, which is ongoing take 42, I believe. All right, so we're going to go ahead and grab these um, identity identifier entity ID as well as the reply URL. Okay, so this first one's going to go here. You can go ahead and just replace this. Let's go ahead and do this. Too late for that. Let's go ahead and just click on that one. And this is gonna be the reply URL, okay? So same as it shows here. So it's easy to locate that. And then sign on URL, as you can see here, the pattern is basically um, what we've been putting, except uh, without the stuff at the end. So you can just uh, pretty much just copy this and put it there.
All right, so now that the SSO sign-on configuration was saved successfully, now let's go ahead and close this. And what we're going to want to do is, uh, and don't be worried, so it's not going to show the update here. Just go, you can refresh your page if you'd like. All right. Now what we want to go ahead and do is download this Federation Metadata XML. Click Download. All right. And what you're going to want to do is we're going to want to pop back, pop back over here, and you're going to import that file here. Okay. All right, get the green check marks. Go ahead and click on OK. Let's go ahead and proceed with some additional configurations here. Users and groups, let's go ahead and add this. Um, this test group I have is just a group that contains my user I, uh, user here. Um, so of course, typically most case scenarios, you're going to use a group and not individually scope out each user. So let's go ahead and add that. Go ahead and assign it. Right, let's go ahead and pop back over here. Uh, what we want to do now is double click on the gateway object. All right, let's go ahead and navigate. So of course, first make sure you have IPsec VPN enabled. We'll go ahead and click on that. Let's go to, oh, I'm sorry. Let's go to VPN clients, authentication. And so from here, you can go ahead and just add, I already have this created, but you can just click add new. Okay, you can just call this um, Azure VPN. You wanna go ahead and click on add identity provider. We're gonna do Azure VPN. So Azure VPN, as you can see, is the object that we created here. Okay, go ahead and click on OK. And you wanna move over here to user directories on the left-hand side. And you wanna make sure that this is set to manual configuration and enable external user, external user profiles. Okay, so I'll go ahead and remove this. We'll use this new object that we just created. Go ahead and click on OK. And last thing that we need to do is go ahead and navigate to security policies. Of course, if you're not using a wide open rule like I am, this is just a, a demo environment that I have. You would have to go ahead and actually create a rule that will allow the users access to the, uh, the VPN community, right? So it would look something like this. So specific VPN communities, we could do remote access. Uh, and then for the source, what we would need to do is actually create an access role that is using a user um, that is essentially able to be authenticated, right? So for that, we could click on here. We can go to, uh, sorry, access role. You can call it Azure underscore access, something like that. Pop over to users, specific users and groups then you want to use your Azure IDP object that you created, which uh, which I which one we created in the beginning of the video is Azure CP. And you can just add, you know, whichever group or users you want to add. Click on OK, and then have that as the source. You can just call it Azure Access or something like that. Okay. And then the, now the last thing we have to do is go to the mobile access shared policy. Okay, you wanna to navigate to this section over here, the little green users icon. And you wanna make sure you have a generic user profile here. If you don't, that's fine. Just go ahead and right click on this, go to next external user, new, sorry, new external user profile. And you could do match all users and I already have one, but essentially it's gonna pop up a box and you just have to click on okay. There's no other additional configuration that needs to be done. And then you'll have a, this generic user profile created. Just click on save and, and then close it. All right, and I know I've said uh, two times already that it's the last thing that we had to do, but <laughs> I can assure you this is the actual last thing. I did forget, we do have to go ahead and copy over the script that will be located in one of the SKs that I linked below onto the management server and ex execute it. 
And so I have WinSCP already loaded up here. And I have my script already downloaded locally to my machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and start a new session here with the SCP protocol over to my management server. All right, and since I've already done this before, I have this script located over here in my slash home slash admin, but we'll go ahead and just redo this. And it looks like that once you do run it, it actually generates a log file as well, but we'll go ahead and delete that and uh, go ahead and do this again. So at this point, I'll go ahead and uh, launch putty since we already have the file uh, transferred over. So we'll do same thing. Okay, and now you actually have to go ahead and run these uh, commands, uh, the, the Chamod command to make it executable. Uh, let me actually go ahead and pull that up really quick. So it's gonna be located um, right here. Chmod U plus X, blah, blah, blah. Go ahead and run that. Okay. And then we want to run this script uh, with the argument of number one. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, go ahead and use your smart console credentials. And if you're not using an MDM, just press enter here. All right, and that's it. And you can go ahead and exit and close WinSCP. All right, and now all we need to do is just go ahead and install policy. Perfect. All right, and that should be all the configuration that's required. So let's go ahead and try to use the VPN. And there we go, authenticated by your identity provider. And now I'm connected to VPN. So um, let's go ahead and just show you that. I, I, didn't, I didn't show you the IP that I connected to, so it looked like it just automatically connected. Uh, let me go ahead and do that for you really quickly. Just go connect to 13.66.22.182. As you can see, that's our external IP of this gateway being hosted and the authentication is using an identity provider as that's what's configured on the gateway object itself. You can see that when you connect, it takes you to this uh, SAML authentication page. And then you can go ahead and authenticate with your Azure AD credentials. Um, that's pretty much it. If anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out. I'd be more than happy to help you guys out. Um, but I really hope that this video kind of shed some light on how to get this set up. Thanks and have a good one. Take care.